Hey guys, well, you can see it's, uh, let's turn this off. Sorry about that. You can see it's the uh, 3rd of November and uh, didn't get as much progress done as I would like. Obviously didn't get it done for Halloween and uh, a little disappointed, but that's okay. Um, you know what? I just want to say real quick that, um, listen, don't get discouraged if your timeline doesn't work out the way you want it to work out. If, if things come up, everybody's got things that happen in our lives that interrupt our creative process. And we have to take time to take care of those things, our family and other obligations, and that's okay. Don't get discouraged. You know, it doesn't matter how young or how old you are uh, in the process, you know. Um, you know, you could be uh, older like I am, or you could be younger like some of the makers that are out there. And, uh, you know, you don't necessarily uh, get to do this as much as you would like. But, uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean that your dream or your ideas or your creativity is dead. It just means that sometimes other things take priority and that's that's okay. So don't don't beat yourself up over it, okay? So we, we've made some progress here. Um, we have continued to add and add layers of foam. This is this is a good look at uh, this side. This side is still quite undone as you can see. I haven't worked on this side very much, so it's it's not quite as finished as the other side. I've I've painted I've painted the the red clown hat. Do you remember the red clown hat? I painted that and I cut it to fit to use as a skull cap to hold help hold the mask on my head. I've I've tacked the ears in place just to kind of get some idea, some sense of proportion and where they would be. That may be where they go. It may not be where they go. Um, this is a combination of cut foam on a small face casting of myself that's really old. You got, you got some cut up milk jug in here to add some jaw structure, right? For the opening and closing of the mouth. And we'll work that all out in detail later. We're, we're using liquid latex. Uh, this is Mold Builder from uh, a hobby store, okay? Um, it's just Mold Builder. It's very concentrated, so it goes a long way. If, if you were making a mask, a slush cast, pouring a mold, something like that, this would be way too thick. And you wouldn't want to use it. What you would want to do is dilute it with some purified water. Okay. Um, ratio wise, it's just kind of just kind of by testing to see at what point uh, you need it. You need it to be sort of like a a really really heavy cream consistency, but you want it to flow well. Okay. Uh, you can use tap water. I have used tap water in the past. Sometimes tap water has contaminants in it. Listen, use this in a well-ventilated place. This has got a, a high ammonia content in it. And if you have a latex allergy for crying out loud, don't, don't use this stuff, okay? Or if you use it, make sure you're wearing some vinyl gloves, okay? Uh, word of advice, it will scrape peel off your skin very easily sort of like Elmer's glue if you're wearing your best Eagles concert t-shirt or your best pair of jeans if it gets on them it, it's not coming out okay it's just not coming out because it it melds in the fabric and you can't wash it out you can't pull it out it's it's just there okay all right so um what what i do when when i'm cutting uh foam pieces to add uh sometimes i use big pieces like this forehead piece right uh, i used uh, a big piece of foam and i used uh, a hot wire uh, cutter that's typically for um just regular sheets of foam not 
this type of foam, okay? Uh, and, and if you are gentle with it, you can use it in a sawing motion and cut through it. Again, remember, well ventilated area, okay? You don't want to be, you know, up close and personal in an enclosed, cramped area doing this. Uh, it's not, not going to be good for you. Uh, it's going to be bad for you. Uh, and then, and then I just take, I take pieces of foam. This is, this is an old cut up, uh, hippo puppet, uh, from years ago, right? It was a giant hippo, um, almost life size that I used in something I did, a small video, a kid's video, um, called Mr. Gibson's Place. But, uh, you know, I, I'm wanting to fill this area out a little bit, uh, here. And so, you know, I, I want to go in here and put this piece right in here. Now, I could, I could do this. I could do this with a bigger piece and bring it on down. But, but I find it's sort, it's sort of like sculpting with clay, right? When you sculpt with clay, I really um, admired Stan Winston's uh, approach when it came to sculpting with clay. If you you've ever seen anything he did he he would start with just very very small balls of clay and just add them on just little by little by little to uh, build up whatever it was he was working on whether it was a face or a maquette or uh, a figurine and and then after he did all that then he would add the details okay so that's kind of what I'm doing here I'm I'm adding pieces of foam, sometimes big ones, you know, just to, to get this forehead in place to kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like. Sometimes smaller ones. Um, you know, I tag the ears in place just to get a sense of proportion. Probably not where they're going to stay because I'm going to have to take them off and form them. Uh, if you see this one here, I have just put some marker lines on here to kind of know where I'm wanting to go and cut in on that um, to shape it better, okay? So what, what I'm gonna do with this piece of foam is I'm, I'm gonna take some of this mold builder, put these scissors up here, get them out of the way. Once again, don't get this stuff on your clothes. It's not gonna come out. I'm gonna put some of this mold builder on, on this part on the face, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to put some on, on this part on the back. I'm going to put it on the back. If you've ever used uh, barge cement or rubber cement, uh, anything like that to glue something together, you, you know the process. You're, you're wanting to get it tacky on both sides and, and then stick it together, right? Okay, so I'm gonna, that's the furnace kicking in, a little cold here today. Take the hair dryer, I don't have a, you know, this is my daughter's old pink hair dryer. show you something that's been completed with this process okay uh, for the most part very similar process with the exception of the use of the latex did not use the use of the latex this was a puppet that I also did uh, where I used the hippo uh, for the video of Mr. Gibson's place and This guy, can you see this guy? He, he used to have a tongue. He used to have a tongue. It, it got lost many years ago. Used, you know, because serpents 
serpents have tongues. But if, if you can see some of the detail here, okay, on the bottom and up close. Now, you can do this lots of different ways, right? You can um, do this with uh, electric carving knife. I think I talked about that. You can do this with, um, with a pair of scissors. Uh, this is mostly, mostly scissor work, okay? My favorite, favorite pair of scissors to use is a pair of curved surgical scissors, okay? You can pick these up. You can find these laying around some places. You can go out and buy them. Um, and, and this curve that's in them, this curve right here, makes for a very good way to trim and smooth edges, okay? So, um, you know, for example, when, when I was cutting out the eyelids, these are individual eyelids that I then put on to the eyes. Um, if you look really closely, you, you can see the pattern of the scissor work on the foam, okay? You can see the kind of ridges and lines that are there. All right, and then the eyes are just uh, some wooden eggs bought at a craft store, painted and with two part, part epoxy on here. I know I saw something recently, I don't remember who was talking about it, might have been an Edwin Savage, about using uh, floor wax to make the glossy part on the eyes, okay? Uh, at one point, this guy's uh, mouth opened and closed, he had a cable in here. The cable system has long since uh, not worked. But this this is a just one example of something you can do with foam and some scissors and some patience. This this guy is still, you know, pretty pretty soft and subtle, supple. Uh, and then this has just got some Liquitex paint on it for the colors. Liquitex acrylic paint. Now, this is great because this stuff remains flexible for a very long time. It, it works kind of like a preservative to the foam and keeps it from getting UV light, which deteriorates the foam over time. And I have a process where I just take a piece of foam like I did with the latex and I put the, the paint on the foam and then I just blot it on to the object to paint it, okay? Uh, you know, and so that's that's uh, that's this snake that we did uh, for Mr. Gibson's place. Um, all right, so I think I think the other stuff should be dry by now. Let's go back and take a look at that. see how that's coming along. Put that guy back over there. okay, so, here we are with this piece that we want to put on here. And, you know, they're, they're, I'm, I'm kind of going off of an image. If, if anybody knows who the artist is for this image, uh, it, it was made into a meme. Uh, it's been around for quite a while, quite a few years. Uh, I've seen some people use it, talk about it, do videos about it. it it's kind of a funny meme. Uh, but, uh, that, that's just a reference point, just a starting point, just a jumping off point, right? It's, it's not something that I have to stick to exactly. Uh, I'm not trying to do an exact replication of that like I did with, with the snake where I, I looked at the uh, photo by a great artist in a kid's book and I duplicated it uh, as close as I could, okay? Uh, to the exact image and the artwork. But but this is not what I'm doing here. This is just something that's got some caricature, uh, some, some uh, a unique look to it. Something that, uh, you know, that I like uh, at the end of the day. And if you can see here that the foam is, is sticking on on itself, okay? Now, 
don't 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 worry if it doesn't all stick at one time okay that that's okay we'll take care of it uh later it it, it doesn't matter okay um you know a piece a piece like this takes some patience uh it takes some time and uh often you work on it a little bit and then come back to it right uh you, you don't necessarily get to do it all at once in one sitting but I like I like that how that piece is going in there. I like how that's bringing the nose line down into the mouth line, just a little nicer and cleaner. And and it's kind of nice that it's got this little edge here because it it will fit in with the pieces uh, of edging uh, the, the the texturing that I'm going to do later to this upper part of his mouth. All right, so. Uh, that's all I have time for, uh, for today. I did a little video time lapse earlier. I'll put that up as well. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Jonathan Latham at Third Monkey. You go out and have a great day, and thanks for watching.